Joining us now from San Diego is Jeffrey Davida, an expert on Latin America. He served as the U.S. Ambassador to Venezuela and Mexico. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So we have the President of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, come to Washington. He met with President Obama. How would you characterize their meeting, and what do you think they achieved? Well, I think the meeting was uh, very useful, uh, helpful. Uh, it's always uh, a good event when the presidents of the United States and Mexico get together because the relationship between the two countries is so full and complicated that it's good to have the, the head men sit down and talk once in a while. The New York Times uh, described the meeting this way. They said it was about workaday deals, but there were no sweeping agreements. What do you make of that description, and what kind of sweeping agreements could there have been? Well, I'm not sure what the New York Times is talking about. Uh, yes, I suspect that it was fairly workaday in the sense that the relationship between the United States and Mexico is a daily activity. Uh, I read something the other day that said that uh, every minute there's one million dollars in trade between the two countries. There's a tremendous flow of people. Uh, there's uh, daily cooperation on questions of security and anti-narcotics. The United States and Mexico are two of the 11 countries working for the negotiation of a new Trans-Pacific Partnership. There are a lot of nuts and bolts. Uh, and a meeting like this is very important because it stimulates the bureaucracy, and I know about this because I'm a, I'm a recovering bureaucrat. Uh, it stimulates the, the bu bureaucracies on both sides to get more done in advance of the meeting. But it would appear that, you know, the issue that dominates the headlines, dominates our television screens here in the United States, is drug violence in Mexico. Uh, do you think that was discussed? And would the Mexican president have sought any kind of help from the United States? Well, the United States has been helping Mexico in a very significant way for many years. There is something called the Merida Initiative, uh, in which the United States provides, uh, actually funds, to Mexican authorities to help them improve their law enforcement uh, uh, situation. And on a daily basis, there's a tremendous level of cooperation between the uh, security services of the United States, FBI, CIA, and others uh, with uh, their counterparts in Mexico. So I would be very surprised if this was not discussed. As you point out, there is a huge trade relationship between these two countries. But the uh, Human Rights Group, Human Rights Watch, says President Obama should have pressed President Peña Nieto to address Mexico's failure to investigate and prosecute what it calls egregious abuses by Mexico's security forces. Do you think that would have come under discussion? I, I'm sure that in the conversation, the President of the United States, in talking about security, would have made the obvious point that it is important that as Mexico pursues the narcotics dealers and pursues others who are threatening their security, that this be done in a way that increases the support of the Mexican people for their government, and this can be done by uh, clear respecting of human rights. So I'm sure it was discussed in some form during the conversation. Right. There have been calls by the Mexican opposition as well as protesters here in Washington that the United States stop helping or continuing to support Mexico's military uh, because that may be seen as tacit support for what the government is doing right now. Uh, would the United States consider something like that? Would it attach conditions to military aid to Mexico? Well, the United States has, uh, for many years, been very careful in vetting and looking at those elements of the Mexican military that do receive support from the United States. And if there is any indication of human rights violations, those elements or individuals uh, uh, do not figure in the cooperative activity. But the, I think we also have to recognize that the Mexican military plays a crucial role in a country which is still has weak police forces. The military plays an important role 
in fighting against various kinds of insecurity. Right. We've just had a horrific incident in Mexico where f just more than 40 students were abducted and subsequently murdered in the town of uh, Iguala. Uh, it was described in a California magazine, California Sunday magazine, which is distributed with the Los Angeles Times and other newspapers in California. Uh, it said this encapsulates what is wrong with the manner in which Peña Nieto handles violence. He tries to ignore it. Uh, and the magazine points out that this could be a turning point for the country and for the president. Do you agree with that? It has been a uh, tremendous uh, uh, incident, a tragic one. Uh, I do think that it's going to have an impact on how the Mexican government structures itself uh, to deal with violence, insecurity, and uh, narcotics trafficking. Uh, there's no way to ignore this event, and I do think that the Mexican government is trying to respond and change the way it does some things. I want to get to one other issue, and that is the issue of immigration. Of course, uh, these two countries have a long common border. They're neighbors. There are an estimated six to seven million undocumented Mexicans who are in the United States. Two-thirds of them will benefit from this latest announcement by President Obama, the executive action that he has taken. Uh, that policy is seen as very controversial in the United States, but it's welcomed in Mexico. What does it mean for these two countries? Well, I think it, when American presidents get together with the Mexican presidents, the issue of immigration is always discussed. I think what President Obama has done on immigration, as well as what he's done on Cuba, which was also talked about, uh, I'm sure, with Peña Nieto, are really courageous steps. These are ongoing problems that have no easy political fix, but the president has used his executive authority, and uh, the president of Mexico has publicly uh, thanked Obama for what he's done on immigration and lauded him, praised him for what he's done on Cuba. You mentioned Cuba. Uh, there have been complaints for a very long time from Latin American leaders about the United States' approach to Cuba. Now, of course, the United States is reaching out to Cuba, trying to restore the relationship, trying to normalize the situation. Uh, Mexico, for one, has welcomed that. How does that change the equation between the United States and Mexico? And what can Mexico do to help that relationship? Well, I think it, 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 it helps greatly in the relationship with Mexico. It was. Uh, always a thorn in the side of the relationship, uh, uh, our, rela our attitude toward Cuba. Now, when just before the president went on TV and announced the, uh, the change, he, uh, several weeks ago, of course, he called the president of Mexico and solicited the president's support. And the president, Peña Nieto, said that Mexico would be helpful. What's really necessary now for the leaders of Latin American democracies is to use their influence in helping to move Cuba toward a greater respect for human rights, toward political freedom. Ambassador Jeffrey Davidow, thanks for joining us, sir.